Um, hi, this is Monica, and uh, I'm making this video uh, primarily for my own students who may be uh, having problem with blending their brush, or um, anyone who wants to join my classes online or in person. Uh, I think I would save a lot of time if I could just send out this video to them and have them learn how to uh, load their brushes so I can just get down to my teaching part of it. So um, before I start, I would say about blending brushes, I used to use these plates most of the times, you know, the foam plates. This is how I used to blend on them. And uh, uh, I've kind of changed my ways of blending. I, I use a tray like this. This is actually an old cookie 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 uh, sheet tray, you know, the thin ones, and it has a lot of paint and it's, it's really messed up old tray. Instead of throwing it out, I've become a fan of recycle and reuse. So I just put a paper towel underneath and then I put a wax sheet on top. So this is a wax sheet and then this is a paper towel underneath and then the, the trays underneath that. Uh, typically you would want to kind of uh, fix it all with a cello tape on the side so that it doesn't move but for beginners you know i do this because it's also more environmentally friendly but for beginners uh you may want to start with this so that you don't have all this additional hassle of uh, doing all this and just getting your uh, blending right first and then uh, as you start painting more i would suggest to shift to this kind of a method to just save the plates and uh all right you do all right so this is a dry brush and now i'm dipping it in water and one stroke, we don't use water, but it's important to dip it in water because sometimes I use a layer of soap to kind of uh, put all the bristles back together after I finish washing the brush. So it's very important that you do put it in water. And if you're using a new brush, there's a whole bunch of chemicals on that, on the bristles of the brush, which you want to remove well with water. And then you want to make sure that your brushes make sure that you kind of uh, remove all the water and a good chisel is very essential for one stroke. Chisel, as the name suggests, is is it, the, the bristles have to come together into a point there, flat, okay? And you want to make sure that it's all together there. And uh, that's all you need before you start. So uh, in my class, you may hear me say, let's take a 50-50 on this brush or let's take a three-fourth. When I say, when I use terms like that, when I say 50-50, it means that the brush needs to have 50% of each of the colors that we're using. So in this case, there would be a triangular patch of red here and a triangular patch of yellow here. And um, three fourths means that you would have more of whichever color I'm telling you to take more of. Like I would say three fourths red, which means automatically the yellow would be the quarter or the smaller side of the brush. Uh, in terms of the amount of brush, uh, amount of um, paint you want to load vertically or the or through the length of the brush, you must make sure that your paint stops at the three-fourths level across the brush. You don't want paint to go in all the way till your ferrule or the metal part because uh, that's where the paint starts drying and that is the worst thing for your brush. So even in the middle of painting, if you see there's a lot of accumulation of water or medium, sometimes we wash our brushes in between colors, then we don't remove all the water properly. It happens to the best of us. And then you go in and blend and you find all water rushing through here. I, I know it can be irritating and painful, but I would stop, remove all the water, rewash my brush or do whatever is needed to make sure that, uh, you know, you start off again, blending in such a way that your paint does not go in. So if you catch it early on, you may just wipe it off on your paper towel like this to press out all the water like that. If you don't catch it on time and you see a lot of paint and everything is going in, I would wash the brush and restart. Okay, and since this is aimed at newer students, you must remember that your brush is your best friend. All right, bad brush and you're gonna straight away get bad strokes. So you wanna make sure that you maintain your brushes. Okay, now for a 50-50 load, there are two ways in which you can blend and you can pick the one that suits you. So I would pick up, you see that it's almost like a 50. It's a little less than that because I'll tell you why. And then I'll pick up the yellow. I don't like to go all the way till the center while I'm picking it up because then I have a chance of transferring between the two puddles. Like I may get a little bit of red into the yellow and a little bit of yellow into the red, which I don't want. I want my puddles to remain pure. So I'm just not taking a risk and just leaving a little bit of gap in the center and then I am blending. Okay, the blending part is you press your brush down with your 
brush almost pointing to the roof and then you drag down and go back up. So you go up, we call this a track. So you go up and down on the track by pressing your brush and do this a couple of times and your brush does not have enough paint right now. You need to do this on a fresh brush, on a new brush, you gotta do this at least a couple of times. Okay, and you go up and down. Okay, this up and down movement is very important. You just don't want to only do only down or only up. You want to go up, down, up, down, and get it in. All right. This is what is going to ensure that your brush has enough paint for you to paint your strokes with. All right. You don't want to go, like many of my students, you don't want to go start here, then start another spot here, then start another spot here, then start another spot there. All you're doing is painting your plate or your wax sheet. You're not really getting anywhere. Okay, so you want to make sure that you are actually going on the same spot. And a good blend would have that in between becoming an orange, but pure yellow on one side and pure red on the other side. So if you're finding it hard to do this, there is another way of blending where you can pick the paint and then you can do this and then you can flip your brush and the yellow overlaps the yellow on the side. Now you don't want to bring this yellow all the way to the red, so you want to keep it away. So this way you can ensure that your yellow does not get muddy and your tracks remain pure, okay? It does waste more paint because you are double using double the space. So definitely you're going to use end up wasting more paint. But it's a great way for people who are not able to keep your colors pure and you're not getting a really muddy mix. This would be a good way to Kind of avoid that but even in this if you go and take your yellow and go right next to the red the chances are that you're going to have a muddy brush so you're going to have to keep your distance and keep the yellow away from the red while doing it but it's easier to do here so this is your 50 50 blend and um if you have to do a three-fourths blend i'm just gonna just wipe my brush off on the paper towel i'm not really going into water again and i'm just going to uh, load my brush with a little more red. Okay, you see that? A little more red. And I'm just going to tip, take very little yellow because I don't want to, again, you know, contaminate my red. I mean, contaminate my yellow with some red. And then see, I'm picking a, I'm, I'm going to be picking a different blending spot because it's less of yellow. So I'm going to go in a different blending spot. And now if you notice what I did is when I was choosing my blending spot, I made sure the red is going to touch the red so that that way, you know, my yellow has no chance of getting red on it. So that these are like really small pointers. They may seem really silly that I'm actually pointing these things out, but you will not believe how much of time and energy it will save you if you learn these techniques right from day one. You know, it does help you a lot. So you see that so if you're finding it hard to do that you can still use the, this method of blending here too where you flip the brush the other way but since you're doing a quarter blend you need to be even more careful that the yellows are really you know just touching only in the edges so that you know you don't get the yellow into the red okay so when you're doing this you can go multiple times in the same direction and then flip it and then go multiple times in the same direction like that and now you can clearly in this see a difference between what a 50-50 load looks like and what a quarter and three-fourths load looks like. Now, often I will tell you, please add floating medium. So floating medium, this is, this is a four-card floating medium. This helps us go on the canvas and on paper. They're both porous surfaces, so often you'll get rough edges and you need to smoothen out your paint. So you're gonna like dip when I'm dipping, I'm not like dousing it in. I'm just touching the tip of my brush, okay, with very, very little medium. You may not be able to see it in the camera, but it's just less than a millimeter, you know, in terms of the amount the brush is going in. It's less than a millimeter, okay. And then you go back and reblend, okay. So this is basically how you blend. And the medium is always after you've already blended in, and then you tip it and remember to blend it back in before you go on your canvas or your surface. You don't want to dip it into your medium and directly go on your canvas because that's a very common mistake that uh, students make. All right, so this gives you an idea of how you should blend your uh, three-fourth brush. The same applies to your 12, 10. As you go uh, into smaller size brushes, if you are doing a quarter load or if you're doing, if the smaller the brush is, I would actually pick one color up like this and go very close to 
the other color and blend in like this, you know, pick the paint up like this at the edge because it's just more difficult to be able to dip a brush in when the bristles are smaller and smaller. So then this technique is better to lift the paint and then you can come back to your blending spot. Uh, especially when you're using a two brush or a six brush, you would want to do that. But this, since this is mainly, uh, you know, aimed at my uh, beginner students, I wouldn't worry about that because I won't tell you to use such small brushes initially. So you should be good with just this much. All right. So I hope you can practice this and you can go ahead and use foam plates initially till you get the hang of it because it is a little more difficult to blend on wax sheet and, um, I just use it because I've got used to it. But initially, I also started off with these plates. They're very, very convenient. If you do have a plastic palette, of course, that's fine. That's great too. So um, I will leave you with this and I hope you practice before the next class so you can get uh, better strokes because your blending is very, very important for good strokes. All right. Thank you so much. Bye-bye.